Hello and welcome back. As you can see, I am trying a new format for the screen. Uh, today we will be using the Phoenix Force deck that I like so much. Like and subscribe. I have replaced Eliath with Enchantress. Someone on my in my YouTube comments suggested Red Guardian who would work fantastic i'm sure unfortunately i did not unlock him so otherwise i would have tried him in this deck uh, i think he fits very well as one of your tech cards potentially cannonball as a replacement for a life as well but otherwise yeah i think this deck is pretty strong and posed in a good position to continue climbing for whether that whether you are still trying to climb to infinite or whether you're like me in infinite and just looking to climb more ranks. So the rank we are at right now is 1,410 and we're just gonna keep climbing. I think when I checked my ranking in the Americas only, I was low 500s, 570 something I think. So I'm still having good success with this deck. Uh, you will too. Uh, so just I'm here to try to help you learn how to best pilot the deck and navigate some really weird situations that can come up. Alrighty, we have Andrew Var 14, rank 349. We have our Shuri Nimrod in hand. They are a Loki deck. We are definitely gonna snap this because Loki is a bad matchup into our deck. I will play Multiple man over here. I do not like personally Hotel Inferno. There is a decent chance of it helping them. I want to play Nimrod left in case a destroy card gets pulled. I get a free destroy. No problem. I was not planning, I wouldn't have destroyed multiple man anyway. So the only thing here that can hurt us, I think is a Cosmo. And maybe that's what this is. Or an armor. Maybe that's a turn force uh, snap for Loki. But they are not going to get, yes it is. So they get six of my cards. Sean Shi maybe is the one that can mess me up, but I also have Ghost Spider now, which is perfect. So we're pretty well positioned. We will see what gets grabbed here. We still have an extra spot, which is nice. Nimrod into destroy, no problem, but my Nimrod is bigger. Let's see if we can get a Deathlock. That is not a good pull for them, but that's fine. We have... Hmm. Do I want to... Spread my power? I don't think I want to spread it. I want to consolidate it. So we will do Venom and Deathlock mid. We're throwing mid, but that's fine. We should have enough power on left and right. We have a huge Venom. And even if they Sean here... Whoa. Okay, this is going to be closer than I thought. Okay, we win. That's more than enough power. Left, and then right, and we're of course throwing middle. Because we get the Nimrod back left. And a very solid 8 cuber against a high ranked player with just a basic Shuri Nimrod double destroy. And so you saw how I read what their snap was telling me, right? 
So they snapped on turn four. It's obviously a Loki deck. Quinjet is a dead giveaway. And if you're still not sure, Agent Coulson is a giveaway. So the Loki matchup against my deck is very poor. So very early on, I had my winning line. I knew it was a Loki deck. That's as easy of a snap as it comes because Loki is such a bad matchup into my deck because they need the perfect set of cards uh, from my deck. And they got a decent set, right? They got Nimrod, they got all three of my destroy cards. So they could do a little bit of damage, but that's nothing compared to Shuri Nimrod double destroy. Okay, up next we have Marlos. Dark Dimension. We have Shuri and Phoenix Force, but we need our destroy cards and we need a target. So we're not in the best position right now. Echo. Echo could mean Cerebro 2. So with Cerebro 2... Hmm, I don't know where I want to play Dagger. With Cerebro 2, I think we have to watch out for Shadow, Shadow King. I could play Dagger under Dark Dimension, and maybe I draw into Ghost Spider. I could play Dagger Middle, and then if I draw a Destroy card, which we are less than 50% to draw, we'll just hide it. Okay, now I'm starting to become more convinced it's Cerebro 2. Which means Goose is on the way. Okay, so clearly I should have played... <laughs> clearly I should have played... Dagger. Middle. So instead we will go Nico into Shuri. Into... Hoping we draw a Nimrod. Okay, there's Goose. Shang-Chi does nothing for me this game, but we do have Enchantress, and that is why Enchantress is here. So it being C2, is that where Cerebro is? So if I... Oh, beautiful. Okay, so I'm going to have priority going into this last turn. I'm going to snap. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to play Nimrod. And then I'm going to play Carnage mid. And then I'm going to play Enchantress. Oh, I won't be able to Enchantress because I'll have priority. Hmm, I spaced. And they're not going to grab priority from me. I'm going to throw Enchantress here. Uh, I got tripped up on the priority. Okay, and now we don't have priority. So now it is... What do I want to double? What do I want to double? I guess it's just the Nimrod. And I should win middle and I should win left? This is a very atypical <laughs> type of game. So let's see. Let's see if I can pull this out. Oh, wow. Enchantress. Wow. <laughs> that is... <laughs> okay. So, clearly they did not draw into Cerebro. So... But we were ready for it. Why did they stay? Very curious why they stayed with 
knowing I had Shuri down and I could double whatever was in Baxter building. So I was almost definitely going to win Baxter building without them playing Cerebro. But clearly we were ready for the Cerebro play and we would have tagged the Cerebro. That's why we lost. We purposefully did not play Nimrod on five. We played Enchantress in the Dark Dimension to take away their Cerebro play. It was highly likely they were going to play into Dark Dimension if they had Cerebro. The reason being, I would probably have priority here. If they play Cerebro somewhere else, that gives me the opportunity to take out the Cerebro. If for some reason, if I have Rogue, I can Rogue the Goose Lane and try for that 50-50. I can play Enchantress or something else so the the chances are so high that they play cerebro in the dark dimension so i did not want priority going into turn six that way i guarantee when the game even though it's funny how this game works i actually had priority when the game was technically over but the priority for Dark Dimension works that whoever has priority going into turn six, their cards flip first. So I needed them to have priority going into turn six, which is why I for, uh, passed up playing the Nimrod, because I did not want priority going into turn six. That means my Enchantress goes off after their cards reveal, which I was fully expecting their Cerebro left. And then on the last turn, I can play some card to get to to get to get winning the middle lane. And it could have been any number of cards. It could have been Sean. It could have been Phoenix. It would have been more than enough power to win Baxter Builder. Okay, we have the famous Flutter Makaka. We have Dagger and Phoenix Force. No destroy. Now the chances are high that I actually do draw a destroy card. Six cards in deck for them. Same for us. So a 50% chance to draw my destroy card. So is this a Cerebro deck? Okay, no Nimrod line. Still no destroy card. So we will just play multiple man. We have our Enchantress. This is almost definitely a C2 deck. So I do not want priority. There's our destroy card. We will snap. I will play Nico first and then Carnage. That'll make Carnage six instead of four. And then next turn, we will play Phoenix Force. And then last turn, we will go Spider the Phoenix Force, multiple man, and play Enchantress. So it's just going to be where are they going to play their Cerebro. Again, we do not want priority. So it's fine if we're winning right. And we will move the Ghost by, we will move the Phoenix Force mid, the multiple man mid, Ghost Spider at left. And then play Enchantress. Probably right is what I'm thinking. And never mind. That is where we will be playing Enchantress. So if they have two, four, six, eight. I have ten. Hmm. Actually, I'm going to throw mid. I am afraid of a. 
I am afraid of a uh, blue marvel, which would put them at 2, 4, 6, 8, 12 points of power. And if I move multiple man, I only have 10. So instead, I am going to play multiple man over here, go spider it back, and then enchantress the left lane. 13 power should be more than enough once I take out Cerebro. Perfect. And yes, we would have won mid. So they didn't go the blue marble route, they went the mystique route. Uh-oh. That should still be fine because all those buffs go away. So they only have eight points of power everywhere. Oh, and it may have been enough. I forgot the Baxter building bonus gets flipped. And this is why Enchantress is in the deck. Ongoing is a... Uh, has come up in popularity. And just the world's easiest win. Nobody expects Enchantress in this deck. Nobody expects Shang-Chi in this deck. So they think they're in an advantageous position. And you see, we just decimated this Cerebro deck. Eight points of power max in a lane. Okay, we have our Mac PDX. Rickety Bridge is nice for a Nimrod line. We have our Phoenix Force, our Carnage, and two tech cards kiln is also nice for this deck so it, it would appear we are going with the shuri nimrod line and we cannot because of avengers compound which is fine so we just have to draw into nimrod So we have a 20% chance. Oh, nice. Thank you for helping me. A 25% chance. Did Baron Zemo come through for me? Oh, he did not. Alrighty. This is a retreat. Sadly, Nimrod wanted to be bottom three in my deck. With this type of deck I'm using, combo deck, these games will happen. And these are some fantastic locations for us, but we just didn't draw the line we needed. And so we're at one cube. I've been winning a lot up until this point. So we take the one cube loss and we're still up a bunch of cubes. Okay. Porcupine eats corn. Super flow is kind of nice. I potentially could get down an early Nimrod, destroy that for a Phoenix Force to Nimrod. Our hand is okay. We have our Nimrod, we have a tech card, we have Ghost Spider. Now our hand is absolutely fantastic. We will continue to hold out because ultimately we need a destroy card. Vulture, so we are playing standard move. <sighs> I don't want peace. I want problems always. I'm glad I held out. <laughs> Not a single destroy card in hand. Uh in this game. Mend it. I, I don't have my destroy card. This is I suspect this is a bluff snap. Oh, I didn't undo. What happened? Okay, I guess we're in it. My, uh, I swear I clicked the button. That's interesting. 
Okay, I get a 12 power Nimrod. I do have Sean. So I might be able to guess where that Vulture is going. Can I get a destroy card? No. Okay. Maybe they just keep playing Cannonball mid? I'm staying in this and I'm going to do a very wacky line. I'm going to pull... I'm going to pull Ghost... Where are they likely to play their Cannonball? Because I could do something funky like this. But let's play Stegron last, because that's uh, funnier. So we're just seeing this game out. Uh, we both got hosed by District X, and just see what happens. Okay. That's what I wanted to do. What a game. A game that I didn't even want to stay in. Look at that. Okay, so apparently Stegron is a good substitute card, tech card in this deck. Uh, no, not really. Definitely don't play Stegron in this deck. But we were able to pull it out with some creative uses of Ghost Spider being unpredictable. Uh, it was kind of guessing where they would want to play their Cannonball. And I don't think I articulated it, but this would have, it either would have been middle or right, it probably wouldn't have been left. So if they play Cannonball middle, they're at 14 and I lose, this this was all just guess then, guesswork uh, about where they were likely to play. Or maybe I don't, it maybe depends where Stegron flips somebody. Really weird game, maybe one of you all can figure it out. Uh, all the different permutations and let me know but it didn't seem like a completely hopeless chance because of district x messing us both up and cloning that's coming through i get to play two 12 power cards whenever i get district x i get low power cards so being able to play two 12 power cards is pretty nice and pull this one out Okay, we have Stan twice. Not a great hand. We have two destroy cards and two tech cards and another destroy card because I'm not a fan of this time theater location. Uh, high ranked player, normal deck. And we probably just play the death lock for stats. We have Sean Patriot. Well, we have Enchantress for that. So maybe this is turning better. This is turning better because what I am planning on doing. Maybe I throw Necrotia. So I'm definitely playing Enchantress mid. And that's a last turn play, which means comboed with Carnage. So, I just need stats. And I'm afraid of a Sean Chi here, so I will play, just play out my Phoenix Force. Boy, I want to snap. 
and seeing two page boy you lined up two pages just easy 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 target so i got a snap here uh, the, uh it's it's unlikely they think i have enchantress and so they're very low power here So I should win with just the Nimrod and Enchantress. And then even if they Shawn me here, some weird Shawn play. This could be a... This is a Ultron play. This is Ultron mid. Ultron mid is 8, 9, 10... It comes down to the Mysteria. Yeah, yuck. Ugh. I'll send it. Oh no, good. It's not Ultron. Thank you. But they still might win mid. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy enchantress the mvp mvp so this is a fantastic example this will be the last game this is a fantastic example of why you hold your tech cards for the last turn you want to maximize your cubes again nobody expects a double destroy phoenix deck to have enchantress nobody and they lined up their ongoing cards in the same lane being very greedy with the onslaught play and it's just such an easy target and so even if it were ultron we still beat ultron because yeah they just get the 10 power because the illusion is here the mysterial illusion so we still beat ultron anyway so a, a strong win a little atypical we didn't have what am i doing playing phoenix force by herself in a lane but i did uh what am i doing playing nimrod without shuri because shuri wants to hide in the bottom four cards of my deck but you can see this is the flexibility I like to preach with this deck. Look at the power output for my opponent. They have negative one, nine, and four. So there are so many games that people overlook where they go, but nerd, you need 20 power to win. And sure, a lot of games, you there are definitely games where you need 20 power to win, 20 plus power. But there are so many games, if you pay attention, where you need double digits to win, and not even. I'm literally winning two to negative one in this lane. So there are so many games, if you start paying attention, that are just like this. It's mediocre. My opponent didn't draw great. I didn't draw great. So who wins in those games where neither of us draws great? I want to be the one to win those games. I don't want to retreat. I want to win the games where we both draw poorly. And we both did. And guess what? I came out on top. It's weird that they passed up the Hulk play, but again, they were going greedy and wanted to get Patriot down. So these are the games with this deck that you can pull out and win four cubes because of a tech card. That is what keeps this deck afloat when you don't draw into your main winning lines. And this is a fantastic case of that. Okay, so we didn't quite get to breaking a thousand, but this is where I'm gonna call it. Clearly I gained, I think I was at 1,400 when I started. So I've gained almost 400 ranks or 400 ranks. And this deck continues to be a strong performer. I've used it now for six months whenever I quote unquote need to win. And it's been highly successful for me. Uh, some of you all have experienced success with it, and that makes me happy to know. 
Uh, and just using this deck, you can use it to climb to infinite. You just, again, have to be careful with your snaps and retreats. It's not about wins and losses. It's about cubes. So here's the deck. I will have the deck code in the comments and a couple of links to the Reddit guides. I encourage everyone to give this deck a try. It's very powerful and clearly can win. I am in high infinite, obviously, and having success with this deck against the best players. So it can win against everybody, uh, as you've got to see. So until next time, take care.